scary? Yes. All right. Well, let me do the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very excited to welcome our next guest. You may remember him from the band Steam and their number one hit song, Na Na Hey Hey, Kiss Him Goodbye. We're very excited to welcome the one and only Gary DiCarlo to the show. You're on the air live with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. I think it's quite unique that the uh, the group was called Steam because do you know how many times I've sung that song in the shower? <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so I see. You know how the name came about to be? Well, that's what I want to find out because I want to read this quote to you, and, and you can tell the story because it's a very unique story. Uh, it said in, in reference to the group Steam, they did not want to tour, so Mercury Records hired another group of musicians to impersonate the non existent band called Steam. Go. <laughs> well, I, actually, the, the, there was no Steam. Steam was the three writers, myself, Paul Lecca, and Dale Frazier. Ah. That, that, Nana was a B-side of one of my records, and they wound up splitting it. And, and I was supposed to have a group, and the group never materialized. So then they wound up hiring these, uh, this group, and they were basically just a road group. And the only reason that they sang anything on the album was because they wanted me to sing everything on the album and have them go out and take the credit for it and i said no i wouldn't do that well good for you because then there would have been an early incarnation of millie vanilli and that would have been cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you see you see that's the whole thing they didn't feel that way they felt that it was no big deal yeah they when i said that to them that it was my voice and whether they liked it or not you know what I mean? I, it was my my instrument. I perfected it to where the sound that it developed to, and they felt it was no big deal. Wow! And the rest is history. And, and they really didn't think this thing was going to be a big hit. It was like a huge monster hit. Uh, didn't I read something about that? Uh, somebody went out and purchased a bunch of the records, and that way it got to be like a big hit. There's kind of a story behind that, right? Mm, no, no, not not really. There, there's so many bogus stories on on uh, the internet. Uh, it, it's amazing. I don't know where these people get their information. And and there's also uh, I don't think I've ever gone anywhere that somebody doesn't know someone that was in a group called Steam, yeah. <laughs> or or, or uh, really I'm telling you, or or they were in the studio at the time it was done. Which yeah, those are all bogus stories. Yeah, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I guess people just want to be connected to something, and because I never really came forward, uh, you know, there were so many people that were saying they were in person that that they were me. Well, I'm glad uh, to hear. It, I'm it, glad it, to hear that, Gary, because like as my my daughter here is the other host, and she said, "Well, I read on the internet that that Gary and all his people, the record people." Well, went no, out. not Gary. The, the it said on the internet that the the label. Well, the label people yeah. went out and bought multi copies of the record to actually push it, which really wasn't payola, but it was it was kind of deceitful. And to find out now, it's not true. No, no, not really. the The, the record actually uh, pretty much was on its own, mm -hmm. but when it came out, it, it, it was it was jumping up the charts pretty pretty fast, and it, it just caught on. Uh, it, it was a combination. It, it was um, almost, because of the way the record was recorded, there's no guitar on it, there's no bass on it. Uh, it's all piano and organ overdubs, and I played percussion on a board, and, and the, um, the chant was born that night in the studio. It, it, uh, the song had been written a few years earlier, and it was just called Kiss Him Goodbye. It was a blue shuffle, mm -hmm. and I always liked it. And, um, you know, I said to Dale, uh, I, I want to do this uh, tonight when we go in the studio. So they just pulled a, a uh, Paul pulled a track, a drum loop, and, and it was eight bar drum loop of something that I had done. And it was called Sugar, written by Neil Sedaka. Right. And, and that was the drum track, and then everything was layered on it. And then we were, were going over the song at the piano, and... You know, Paul had the hook with all nanas in it. You know, na 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 goodbye. And I threw the hey hey's in, and that's that was it. Then we went into the studio and we went in at seven, 
and uh, it was done by five o'clock in the morning. Well, that's why I, I, hear I love having people on because there there is so much misinformation on the internet. Let me ask you about this because it also said uh, to make the song less desirable to the DJs across the nation at the radio stations that you guys lengthened the song with a repetitive chorus of "Na Na Hey Hey" and you did it on purpose to make DJs not like it so much. That can't be true, is it? No, absolutely not. That th- Paul came up with a concept of not wanting B-sides to be good, which for, the, for I could never figure that out why. Mm-hmm. I mean, we knocked the Beatles out of number one, and, and they had a double-sided hit, which was Come Together and... Um, something. What was it? Come, huh? Some, come Together and Something. Yeah, right. Come, come Together and Something. And... I could never understand. I mean, I, I'm the type of a guy that when I bought a record back in the days when I was buying 45s and stuff, I always flipped it over and listened to the other side. Right. But he was under the impression that, that you should not have a good two sides on a record, which I, I never agreed with. But um, that was his concept. But that didn't happen until after Nana was done. After Nana was done, then he started really putting the pressure on making b- the really bad B-sides. I mean, these fuck- no, I don't think anybody would play these. <laughs> these were bad. <laughs> I'm telling you. But, but, but you know, that's, that's the way he thought, so, you know, I mean, that's what happened. But that, believe me, that concept was never there. I, I don't go into the studio intentionally to make a bad record. <laughs> No, oh, that's crazy. I was uh, one more thing. Like I said, I love this opportunity to get people like to, yourselves to to, right. to kill yeah. these rumors because it, it's it's nuts. As far as B sides, I'm like you. I love B sides. Some of your best you know best stuff was on yeah, B sides. Yeah, absolutely. I used to flip over a lot of Little Richards uh, B sides were great. I mean, you know, Fat Domino. But a lot of the things back in the old days I flipped over, and the, the other sides were great. Right. A lot a lot of the old doo wop groups. Well, same thing. Let me let me ask you because you know we're we're talking about all things Beatles tonight because we're promoting this great event that's going to be happening next weekend. Um, what was it like for you and everyone else who was involved with Nana to know that the Beatles were huge? I mean, there was the whole Beatle mania and everything like that. And then, as you mentioned, in 1969, you bumped them out of the number one spot. What what that yeah. had to be a head trip. Well, I, to tell you the truth, I never thought it would happen because because of the momentum that they had and and the amount of hits that they had. I just said, you know, we were bubbling under. I think we were number three, and um, and I said, wow, you know, that's great that, that it had gone that high. But you know, you have to understand that it was a it was a double edged sword for me because you know I wanted to see it get to that point, but but then again. Nobody knew it was me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody thought it was that group. That that, that that even with the video, you know, if you watch that video, you'll see that his lips are nowhere in sync with the vocals. Right. <laughs> and you know, I'm, if, I'm serious. No, I believe if you look if you look at the album cover to where you guys are all in the steam room, I swear to God, the Go Go's copied that <laughs> when they put out their Beauty and the Beat because. They're all <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody asks me which one is me. I'm not on the front. I'm on the back. <laughs> well, That's not even me on the front. I, I, they say, you know, wow, man, is that you with the mustache? <laughs> That's the guy in the back, man. It, it, it was, I don't know. He's about 250 pounds or something. That's not me. I was, I'm a little guy. I'm, I was lucky I weighed in at about 118. Well, you know, we're going to have Ron Dante on later tonight, and I always thought that it would be frustrating for him to be the singing voice of the Archies, because, like, they were kind of on Ed Sullivan, but he wasn't really on Ed Sullivan. However, I think it might have been more frustrating for you. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it was. You see, back in those days, it was very common. Uh, A lot of people made records and then just put groups on the road with them, because, you know, they, they were comfortable with being producers and writing and just staying in in New York City or wherever they were doing it from and you know that wasn't my goal my goal was to be uh, a a singer and to you know get out there and perform I I enjoy being out on a stage and having people get into what I'm doing and you know that's the whole purpose of of what I do when I can no longer do it uh, you know then I just have to 
you know, fade off into the sunset and, you know, travel or something. Right. But, but, you know, as far as a, if I can continue and keep my health and everything, then, you know, I'll just keep keep doing it. Well, I know you, you do a lot of these nostalgia things. I guess you've done some monkeys conventions too, right? Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm doing one uh, in March again, and I'm also doing a Brady Bunch convention. And um, I, I have a remake. I, I did Nana, but I, I, I've done it in a dance uh, mode. And uh, it's, it's on iTunes now. It's called Kiss em Goodbye. So, you know, you can, can check it out, and, um, and it can be bought. It's, it's like 99 cents. And um, I also have a video out, and that's on YouTube. You know, just look for a black Lincoln, uh, old black Lincoln, and I'm sitting on the trunk. And uh, it, it's kind of it's kind of nice. It's an old shot in front of a, and, an old hotel that we have here in Bridgeport, you know. And your lips will actually match the song. I'm sorry. What? I said, and your lips in that video will actually sync up to the song, so that's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, in doing. Well, I, 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 I'll, I'll tell you, I'm getting a very good reaction from uh, the DJs on it and from people also, uh, people that hear it. Because I, I, I literally changed everything. I changed the key, I changed um, the melody on the on the verses, and also the the hook is different. But but yet it still has the same ingredients uh, that the older one had. The old one, mm -hmm. and um, you know it has a lot of energy. It's it's the, like a house rhythm, you know, for the for the dance clubs. Well, you know, even the original song had a lot of energy, and, and I liken it to. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I like I'm it. not trying to replace it, man. Believe no. me, uh, the, the, it, this is it's going into its 45th year this year. Wow, mm -hmm. it, and it's still going, man. So believe me, I'm not trying to replace it. I'm just shooting for you know for the dance people, for the dance right. clubs, and for a lot of people that that enjoy listening to something that still has. Um, you know, a touch of, let's say, the 60s and the 70s, you know, maybe even a touch of the 80s. Well, in talking about, you know, different versions, and I think it's great that you've kind of reinvented Nana and you're doing the dance mix and everything. Let me ask you, though, I mean, as somebody who was involved in the original song, how do you feel or how did you feel when certain people covered it? Like, for example, I know Bananarama covered it. Yeah, that went number one in England. And um, the Nylons redid it from Canada. That went to number 12 in the country. And um, what's her name now? The DeBarge, Christina DeBarge, just had it out not too long, a few years ago. She had it, it was called Goodbye. That was another one that went 12 in the country. And then we've had covers with uh, Jay-Z used it, uh, a rapper from from uh, Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. called uh, Wale. He, he did it with um, Use Our Hook with uh, Lady Gaga. And um, then there was a couple of versions uh, called We Ready. And um, I can't think of the other one, but, 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 how does it, but we've, had, we've had quite a few. How does it feel to listen to that? Because I know, for example, like just me as a fan, if I really, really love a song and I hear another musician do it, and they can't live up to the original. I'm just like, oh gosh, that they they murdered it. That's horrible. I can't listen to it. Do you, do you? I mean, it's like your child. No. How do you feel about no, that? I no, I don't. No, I, no, that doesn't bother me unless unless it's just recorded really badly or the person can't sing or something. Right. Because like when the Nylons did it, they did it a cappella, and and it, it, they did a nice they did a nice version. They did a great version. Banana Rama. You know, they did it in their style, so so it didn't bother me because that was their style, and that was pretty much what they did and sounded like on all their recordings. Right. So you know what I mean? It wasn't so. I, I, if you hear, we I heard a German version that was amazing, man. It, it would crack you up. It, it was like you know how they sound when they're marching. Uh huh. No, 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 no. You know, <laughs> it was amazing, man. And then and then there's a, was an Italian version. Where they go, na 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 na, hey hey hey, ciao ciao. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, speak, I mean, yeah, speaking, speaking, like, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe me when I tell you, man. Even hearing it at the hockey games yes. or at a football game or a baseball game, whatever. We've had commercials. It's been in uh, several movies, and, and my favorite movie was uh, Remember the Titans. 
because the the movie seemed to actually revolve around the song. You know, it was like it was like their inspiration, and and it caused them to bond together and to play better on the field. Right. And and they they sang it at the grave site when when the, one of the fellows died. But they sang it real slow. That was creepy, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gee. Right. Well, you but know, it, it, you know, it was a very touching movie. It was very inspirational. It, as if you know, a, a bar isn't lively enough. If you go at a bar and you put on your song and everybody breaks out in song and they can sing it because the words are very simple. You can be totally <laughs> drunk and you can remember na na hey hey. <laughs> yeah, a- absolutely. You're right. You're right. It's very simple, and I think that's why. It uh, it was used and people picked up on it so quickly at at the uh, arenas, you know, the stadiums and stuff, because back in 1978, the organ player for the Chicago White Sox had the sheet music on her organ, and um, she just picked it up and started playing it, and the people in the stadium started to sing it, and then all of a sudden the whole stadium was singing it. So she she started doing it on a, on a daily basis, you know, wh- whenever their games were, and uh, it became their team song, and that that started pushing it back into the mainstream again, and then all the other teams started picking it up. It's been it's been voted one of the top five all time sports songs through ESPN. It's been on Jock Rock albums. Uh, it's. It's it's amazing. I, I tell you, I can't believe it myself. You know, are, are you, I thank God every day for it, though. I'll tell for you. Sure. <laughs> well, I, I, met, I bet you are because of any residuals you might get. But are you a sports fan? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I I'm not a baseball fan. Uh, unfortunately, I love football. Uh, hockey is probably my favorite, and I watch boxing. You know that type of stuff. Right, right, right. Well, yeah, uh, the only. The only sport that I that I've never heard used on of was golf. I think <laughs> <laughs> some, I, don't, I don't think it fits. You know what I mean? <laughs> They'd have to whisper it when they did it. You know, say, nah, 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 nah. Look at that ball go. You know? and, and didn't I, didn't I hear that you had heard a story that somebody actually heard the song they were in line to check out or something? Because they'd heard like you hear it in elevators with music, and they were like, I didn't know that song had words to it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. A, a, a woman emailed me. And she was uh, in in Macy's, and uh, she said that it came over their their speakers, and she was waiting to check out, and she started singing it. So the woman behind her kept staring at her, and <laughs> finally, when the song was over, she w- went up to her and she said, uh, "I didn't know that song had lyrics." <laughs> <laughs> well, think about it. You know, when when the people were in the stadiums and everything, they just basically sang the hook. Right. Right. So, so you know, a lot of young kids, for example, would would just think it was a chant, right? Even and at the high school, at the it, high school level, too. I liken it too. So it, that's why I said, yeah. I, that's why I thought it was a great idea to redo it. Absolutely, and you know, I, I liken it to party kind of music because it, it was a catchy song, like a KC and a Sunshine band would have done way before their time. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and and like I started to say before. Uh, when when uh, I was telling you about the instrumentation on it, mm-hmm. the it, it was almost like a, a pre-synthesizer, you know, it, because of the way the sound was. Right. It wasn't something that you heard on many records. It was very unique. Time. Yeah, very unique. Uh, well, as we kind of wrap this up, though, I want to tell everybody about this event. Now, you're going to be at the uh, America Celebrates the Beatles event next weekend, um, and I'm... I, can you give any details about it? If not, I have them, but I was going to let you do the honors. What do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, tell everybody, I mean, it's going to be you, and, and who are some of the other celebrity friends that will be with you? Who's going to be with me? Yeah. I mean, I, I know there's going to be, like, Tommy James is going to be there, Melanie's going to be there. Oh, yeah, 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 Ron Dante will be there, yeah. yeah. You know what it is? There's so many people, I, I, I can't remember all their names. Yes. I, I understand that Melissa Manchester is uh, just was just uh, was. signed on a couple, what, a couple of days ago or something? Yeah, right. she A was week ago, maybe? Just at it, absolutely. Yeah, we're going to be talking to Ron later on. I just got done talking before you. I was talking to... Melanie and my my heart skipped a beat, Gary. I'll tell you, she's <laughs> yeah. You know. Believe it or not, Melanie was on Mercury uh, at the time uh, when Nana was done. Yeah. Uh, she used to be in you know at, in the building, and and we we did a few um, TV shows 
uh, you know, for, for uh, promos for, uh, let's see, Ohio, uh, Uppy, and Scene 70. One was in Cleveland, and the other one was in Indianapolis. Mm. You know, so so well, I guess Mercury, that's where they, they did their promoting. Well, you know, she never thought she was cute. She thought she thought she had a funny looking nose. That's incredible. She was <laughs> so cute. Really? What? Yeah, that's yeah. what she said. She's like, I never thought I was no, cute. I thought, I thought, no, I thought she was cute too. She was, you know, she just. And I, I used to get. I was amazed by the way she could just stare at the camera. She really played to the camera. Great, man. Mm-hmm. It was great. Absolutely. I, I I wasn't able to do that. It was like I was looking at the lens, and I was saying to myself. There's all people on the other side of that looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> it was like really weird, but um, <laughs> you well, get used to it after a while. Well, let me ask you a uh, last question before we go. We like to always do shameless self promotion. Uh, so tell everybody: Do you have a website or a Facebook or Twitter or anything like that? Yeah, and also y- plug your single. Yeah, again. I'm on Facebook. Yes, I'm on Facebook, and uh, yes, I'm on YouTube also. Uh, Twitter, I, I am Twitter, I, I, I'm trying to think of what else, uh, uh, LinkedIn, I mm-hmm. guess I'm on that also. But what I wanted to tell you quickly is that um, I, I, I'm finishing up a CD, and hopefully I will have it out in a, in maybe in a month, you know, because wow. I, I have to just finish up a couple of vocals and mix it and master it and then get the jacket done and, and it will be out. And it's all original stuff. The, not the new, the new non of Kiss Him Goodbye will be on that. Awesome. Well, well, fantastic. If you get a chance, I, I, if you get a chance, check it out. See, well, tell ab- me what you think. Well, we'll do more than that. I believe we have your direct email, yes. and, and we'll have you on again when that CD comes out. We'll play some tracks. All right, great. I appreciate it. Thank you. Perfect. And in the meantime, we remind our listeners, head over to nycfab50.com to find about find out all the information about the event next weekend, uh, America Celebrates the Beatles. Uh, it has been so much fun having you on the show, Gary. Thank you. It was a pleasure for me to be here. Thank you. All right. We'll keep in touch, and we'll talk to you again uh, in the future. All right. All right. All right. All right. Have a great weekend. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye.